Hi guys and welcome to every episode of Family Guy Season 15 Reviewed. Last time out I had a surprisingly okay time with Season 14. So let's hope this season is more of the same. Or maybe by some miracle even better. I don't have anything interesting to say about the behind the scenes of the show in regards to this season. But I do have a bit of a request to make or it's more of an opportunity for fans of the channel, and anyone who's interested in the channel going forward. I have a poll up regarding what cartoon I should choose for a future series on the channel, so if you want to have your say, please head over to the community section and vote in the poll. I want as much feedback as possible. Now, with that out of the way, I can hurry on into the video. So, starting off, we have... Season 15, Episode 1. The Boys in the Band. Brian and Stewie form a children's band, but Olivia turns up to try and disrupt it. Also, Chris, needing money, takes a job as Quagmire's personal assistant. My best cutaway for this one was... Chris's old job, of a guy racing to an airport, at the end of a romantic comedy. Speaking of that moment, it was also my favourite thing in the entire episode. Usually that's not a great sign for the episode's rating, but this season's opener still gets a 3 out of 5. It was good to see Olivia back at first. It had been a while, and she usually brings at least some drama to the table. She seemed more spiteful than ever here though. She always had traces of it. But here she seems to delight in breaking up Stewie and Brian's band for no reason other than her own enjoyment. At least Brian does the right thing in the end, and quits after he realised it was wrong to leave Stewie in the dark, after he did all the hard work. As an aside, I did like the ending gag, being that Vinny was the new dog Olivia got for the band. Chris, working for Quagmire, never had any real purpose, but it did have a few nice moments. Exactly the type of moments you would expect someone working for Quagmire to entail. The cutaways were solid also, which ensured this episode got a solid free. The construction workers teasing Stewie for wanting to make something of himself. A lot of people really are negative like that in real life. And as soon as Stewie saw the opportunity to get the heat off himself, he poured it right on the guy who encouraged him. Probably some truth there as well. Brian and Peter jumping around in a field was nice to see, but as I said, Chris acting as this desperate lover trying to catch his girl before she left at the airport was fantastic. They jammed in so many cliches of the genre, and the twist that his love was actually some old granny was rather unexpected. Season 15, Episode 2 Bookie of the Year. Chris develops into a star baseball pitcher, so Peter and the guys decide to hustle people. Meanwhile, Brian and Stewie open an Italian restaurant with Frank Sinatra Jr. My best cutaway here was Peter caught in an elevator with Jay Z. And best moment was Peter and later Brian arguing with the Italian woman over her son Joey. This one gets, say, 3 out of 5. It was on the low side of a 3, but I decided to give this rating because nothing about this episode was particularly bad. Chris's baseball staff just developed into the parent bets against their kid in some kind of competition trope, which often appears in TV shows. There was nothing new brought to the table here, except Cleveland, the Quagmire and Joe being jerks, breaking Chris's arm. I did like Chris saying, wait a minute, teenagers don't have wheelchairs? In response to them trying to disguise themselves. The end was also decent how Chris remained in high spirits, despite losing the game with his terrible left arm pitching. The subplot was average at best. Stewie, Brian meet up with Frank Sinatra Jr. again, and bizarrely open this restaurant, but people only eat there because Frank is giving the food away for free. That's about it, really. It's worth noting that this episode is actually dedicated to Frank Sinatra Jr., as he died before it even aired. So, rest in peace to him. I may know nothing about his music in real life, but he did have a few solid appearances on Family Guy, and was somewhat of a mentor to Brian, so I will remember him for that. The jokes here were average at best, 
The crying Italian mum's favouritism for Joey I found good, especially when it was brought up again later. And the piss take of the whole Jay-Z thing was also well done. Don't kick him, muddy shoes, he's got a white suit on. Season 15, Episode 3, American Gigolo. In search of new work during a pilot strike, Quagmire becomes a gigolo, with Peter as his pimp. Meanwhile, Brian gets a job of his own at Mega Hardware. My best cutaway here was Peter's college football bet. And the best moment overall was Quagmire's stripper dance. Unfortunately, I did end up giving this a 1 out of 5. This wasn't great. Both stories had major issues. The bits with the pilot strike and Quagmire first getting into stripping was fine, but it all went downhill when Peter became his pimp. He started abusing Quagmire, and essentially forcing him to have sex with all of these women. It not only made Peter a totally vile human being, it never even made sense why Quagmire put up with it. Like, why was he scared to defend himself from Peter? He hasn't been in the past. The main issue with Brian's story was, you guessed it, Brian himself. He takes a job, doesn't bother to learn about the job, or even help the customers, yet acts incredibly smug the whole time. Then finally we have a weird scene of Stewie performing a makeshift hernia operation on him. It was all a tough watch. As I said, the cutaways were no better. Brian explaining how he got the hernia, trying to save the woman, but letting go of her car after finding out she had a baby, was so bad. I know it was only in a cutaway, but I didn't find the joke funny because it's something I can imagine current Brian actually doing, like in canon. The over minute long clip of Trump's bus tape was a waste of time. It was presented as is, with Peter making the odd comment, adding nothing to it. That kind of lazy pointlessness sums up the episode quite nicely. Season 15, Episode 4 Inside Family Guy, James Woods takes us for a look behind the scenes of the real Family Guy. My best cutaway here was SEAL Team 6 using the Peter Copter to get Osama Bin Laden. And best moment was Peter replacing the cast with balloons. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. This is hardly an original concept. It has basically the same format as the Simpsons episode, Behind the Laughter, and I'm sure a lot of other TV episodes too. However, this episode was not as interesting as the Simpsons version, nor was it as funny. Some of the bits at the start, with the family talking about how they filmed the show, were okay in fairness, especially Quagmire at the board meeting, and Stewie ordering crepes, the scene where Peter replaces everyone with balloons was so petty, and I liked the gag of how Joe's balloon still had the wheelchair, and how the actual Joe had to give up his wheelchair for the balloon. Joe can just never catch a break, can he? Things did slow down in the second half though. Most of the time it was Peter being a jackass, until he finally finds his way back on the show in the end. Instead of the bits of him getting fired, I feel they could have done a lot more, exploring the family's life, and how they juggle it with this reality TV show. For the jokes, I would use the same word again, decent. I liked Peter's explicit tapestries, featuring the minions, and Brian's remake of Old Yeller, where the dog gets the upper hand, but the Peter Copter distracting Osama Bin Laden, who was apparently a massive Family Guy fan, was pretty funny. Season 15, Episode 5. Chris has got a date, 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 date. Taylor Swift agrees to go to a homecoming dance with Chris. But Chris feels betrayed when she releases a song trashing him. My best cutaway was Chris's surprise information for everyone on New Year's Eve. And the best moment was, I suppose, Taylor Swift's song about Chris. This one gets another 3 out of 5. It was an interesting choice for Family Guy to do an episode about Taylor Swift and have her interact with the family. It was nothing special really, but it did try and at least add some drama. 
It was easy to root for Chris here, as he thought he had found this genuine bond with her, and he was genuinely crushed when she released this disparaging song about him. Speaking of that, the episode wasn't afraid to poke a little fun, talking about how repetitive Taylor's songs are, and how it's always about breaking up with boys. They also made fun of the apparently mild beat in Shake It Off, and even called her out for being a bit out of touch. At the same time though, she did make it right with Chris in the end, and was portrayed as a decent enough person for the most part. So I don't know how the Swifties would feel about this episode, but it seemed a fairly balanced take to me. Unfortunately, the episode wasn't that funny, but I did like Peter delivering a pizza, which turns out to be half a Hawaiian, you poor fool. And Chris telling everyone on New Year's Eve that some animals give him boners was quite something. I at least appreciated how enthusiastically he divulged that information. Season 15, Episode 6, Hot Shots. Peter and Lois join the anti-vaxxer movement and decide not to vaccinate Stewie. My best cutaway and best moment were the same thing here, which was Peter's radical penis enlargement. He wanted it to hang down to his knees, so the gag being, they just moved up his knees. I found that pretty damn funny. This one gets a 2 out of 5. This is a weird one for me because I do agree with most of the points made. I'm not an anti-vaxxer like. I had vaccinations as a kid, and overall I think vaccines have been a massive net positive for humanity. The work they've done against some diseases, like measles for example, as shown in this episode, has been very impressive, very good. Where this episode loses me is the purely one-sided take on the issue. I mean, Stewie even admits that the whole thing was propaganda at the end, with Sean Penn of all people flying in to lecture us. This episode essentially paints anyone who has any concerns about vaccinations as pure idiots and dangerous conspiracy theorists. Now maybe a lot of what some anti-vaxxers say would fall under that umbrella, but as someone who tries my best to live life as somewhat of a critical thinker, I can't just leave it at that. There are some things they bring up which do have merit. Even one thing Lois says in this episode about how these companies are able to test their own product with not as much independent monitoring as there should be. I mean, Big Pharma would never lie, right? Oh, they actually would. Just look at the copious amount of fines many of these big companies have had to pay out for all kinds of misinformation. Pfizer being the current prime topical example. This is not a conspiracy theory, that's just verifiable fact. Also, this episode acts like there is no risk at all from vaccines, which is simply not the case. There are many possible side effects from them. Some, albeit rare ones, include being crippled or outright killed. Just take a look at the vaccine injury compensation payouts. Only for the recent COVID vaccine, that totals in the tens of millions for numerous different countries worldwide. If you add them all together, it's probably in the hundreds of millions. And the bar to actually prove that seems quite high as well. Again, that's not conspiracy, just fact. Now, if you want to argue that the benefits of the vaccine outweigh those negatives, that's totally fair. Most of the time, I'd probably agree with you. But when this episode tries to make it seem like mandatory vaccinations is like the most obvious thing in the world, perhaps it's not so obvious if you're giving a vaccine to someone who doesn't want it and they end up having a reaction to that vaccine that kills them. In that scenario, like their death is directly on your hands. That's a far more direct correlation than them catching a disease and spreading it to someone else, which may well happen anyway, even if they got the vaccine. You know, it actually annoys me that I have to point all this out in this review, because if this episode had even bothered to touch on this stuff a little bit, while still maintaining the same rough overall message, I wouldn't have had a problem. But it just irks me to no end to see pure one-sided propaganda. It's just the way I am. Please leave your own takes or any questions you may have on this in the comments. Onto a few of the other jokes briefly, Peter as the chatty guy was okay, as was him as the Instagram police. I liked the cutaway complete line at the end. However, the joke with Peter as the Joker blowing up all the vaccines, ending with the gag essentially mocking Heath Ledger's death, was done purely for shock value. 
Whether it worked, or was in bad taste or not, I'll leave up to you. Season 15, Episode 7, High School English. Peter brings us three stories, taken from classic literature. There were no cutaways at all here, so that's an easy one. But my best moment was the ending to Lee of Mice and Men story. This one gets a 3 out of 5. This is the first trilogy type of episode we've got in a while, and it was dead on average in every way. Peter setting up the stories from inside a rich guy's house was mildly amusing, I have to say that up front. It provided some more interesting cutaways between the stories. The actual first story, the take on The Great Gatsby, was not the best. I was not that into the story between the characters, so the best bits about it for me were the little jabs pointing out the pointlessness of it all, like them all changing cars, things like that. Sadly, Brian and Peter, both as rich dudes, didn't produce as much fun as I'd expect, frankly. The Huckleberry Finn segment was more of the same, really. They went through some of the moments from the novel, while skipping over many other parts. Cleveland and Peter's interaction with the con men, Quagmire and Joe, was my favourite bit. The final segment, while the shortest, was also my fave. Maybe it was my favourite because it was the shortest. It meant it never got dragged out with meaningless scenes. I did like the idea of Chris as Lenny, destroying Meg and Brian, especially how Brian pointed out that he had been killed in the previous two stories. I also chuckled at Stewie's, ironically I assume, after Peter said they call me Slim. The ending was also quite funny, how Stewie rushed through the speech before shooting him, as well as his final good luck on those book reports, kids. I did relate to that, as I did actually have to study that book in high school. Season 15, Episode 8, Carter and Trisha. When Carter buys the Portucket Bury, Peter blows the whistle on his plan to use toxic metals in the beer cans. Trisha Takanawa pretends to be his partner in order to get him to confess. My best cutaway here was Jesus with his kid. And best moment overall was Joe beating Brian's Uber right after he pulled him over as a cop. This one gets a 3 out of 5. At first, when Peter hired Trisha to help spill the beans on Carter's shady practices, I thought this would develop into another one of those Peter vs Carter rivalries, but instead they made it more about Trisha, and how she pretends to be in love with Carter, in order to get him to reveal it all in front of everyone. The way it played out was okay, but at the same time, never really meant anything. They showed off Trisha's demanding, bordering on abusive mum, and tried to engender some sympathy for Trisha. I like how Peter spilled her spiked drink, like he was taking a bullet for her, but we got no resolution to this from Trisha's perspective. Also, Carter leaving Babs, who was never even seen in this episode, also added to that kind of meaningless feel. They just acknowledged that she will be back again whenever they need her. The Stewie and Brian subplot was average. It didn't make that much sense that Stewie was helping Brian to drive, but some of his methods were mildly entertaining, like the silly video he put together. Still, my favourite moment was Joe pulling Brian over in his cop car, only to pick him up as a Uber driver right after. That is such a Joe thing to do. This was on the lower end of a three overall though, as the jokes weren't anything special. Season 15, Episode 9, How the Griffins Stole Christmas. Peter becomes a mall Santa, but the real Santa is annoyed that Peter is giving him a bad name. My best cutaway was the little drummer boy when he got into Neil Pert. And my best moment overall was Peter changing one of Santa's reindeers with a non-magical one. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. This was just a no frill but very watchable Christmas themed episode. Act 1 with the crazy sledging on the dining table was classic stupid reckless Peter. It was somewhat entertaining at least, as were some of his antics abusing the privileges he got as Santa. 
The little back and forth between Peter and the real Santa was the best part though. I liked how petty some of Santa's tactics were, like texting Joe, pretending to be Peter, asking him to hang out. Peter is predictably much more over the top, how he switches up Santa's reindeers, causing an elf to have to cut it loose. Chris seemed to be quite happy with the free horse though. Peter and Santa did kind of make up in the end, even if it did take Santa almost choking him out. The Stewie Brian subplot was not really necessary. It was not that entertaining and seemed to mainly be there to take up time. In terms of the cutaways here, there weren't many, but of the ones there were, the drummer boy getting a bit too hyped and destroying the nativity was the most fun. Season 15, Episode 10 Passenger Fatty 7 Quagmire invites the guys to join him on a trip to San Francisco, but on the flight back, the plane is hijacked by terrorists, forcing the guys to stop them and Quagmire to land a stricken plane. My best cutaway here was the Quahog girls, the way Lois imagines life without the husbands, and best moment overall was the final sequence of Quagmire trying to land the plane. This one gets a much welcome 5 out of 5. This was all action, and it resulted in one of the most enjoyable episodes in a while. Let's take Act 1, which was the build up to, and finally the guy's trip to San Francisco. There were a lot of little jokes crammed in here, like Peter getting his eyes mixed up, only for the Korean sweatshop animator to save him. Then the guys all get animated as X-Men, with Joe, of course as Professor X. Even the way Peter hijacked Lois and the girl's trip to Hilton Head felt more like his shenanigans from the early seasons. How he stole a taxi, forcing Quagmire to literally get out of the shower right there and then. They wisely skipped through most of the Frisco sightseeing in a montage, but Joe having huge muscles, on account of how hilly it was, was another funny gag. Obviously, the meat of the story is the hijacking plot. I liked some of Peter's banter with the hijackers, and the plan Joanne Cleveland come up with to try and stop them. Catchphrase included, the scene where Peter and the guy fight on the wheels of the plane was quite intense, but it did actually fit in with the tone of the episode. Eventually, they do take out all the hijackers, including the one posing as a blue t-shirt businessman, However, the military still think they are planning to crash into the Vegas Strip, so try to shoot them down. This results in Quagmire once again showing off what a ridiculously good pilot he is by swerving this massive plane into a somehow safe crash landing. This was not only entertaining by itself, it called back to earlier when the guys were making fun of how easy his job is. It allowed for a nice ending where they are actually able to appreciate him. It was a joy to watch this, honestly. A much welcome reminder that Family Guy can still come up with exciting concepts. Season 15, Episode 11, Gronko's Bees. Rob Gronkowski moves into the neighborhood. While Peter is excited at first, he and the guys can't cope with his party lifestyle. Meanwhile, Stewie and Brian start selling honey at a farmer's market. My best cutaway here was Peter having breakfast in bread. And my favourite moment was the steroid bee breaking the windscreen wipers. This one gets, say, 2 out of 5. This episode, despite the rowdy nature of the plot, fell rather flat for me. I do give credit to Rob Gronkowski for putting in a lively performance, but the act got old quick. They simply never added enough variety to keep this idea fresh. As the guy started to slowly get more and more annoyed with his partying antics, I found myself in agreement with them, which I'm not sure is what I was meant to feel. Annoyance should be for the characters, not for the viewer. The ending where the main plot intersected with the side one was the best bit. How the roided up bees forced him to finally leave. Speaking of the bees, the Stewie and Brian subplot had the best moments. 
I especially like the moment where the bees are chasing them in the car and the super muscly bee suddenly rips off the windscreen wiper and starts smashing the car with it. Sadly though, the jokes here in general were not good. Joe being smug after he went to Italy was decent, as were Peter's bread puns, but that's about it. Season 15, Episode 12, Peter's Death Jam. After trying and failing to create a podcast, Peter finds success as a DJ. Also, due to Lois's allergies, Brian has to sleep in Stewie's room. My best cutaway was an Italian guy describing someone's sexuality. And best moment was Cleveland's pointless waffle taking up all the podcast time. I gave this one a 2 out of 5. Both stories culminated in a rather abrupt, tame way, which left me feeling disappointed with the episode overall. In the main plot, it was Peter being a jerk, shutting the guys out of their DJ hobby, but they all forgive him in the end, despite still screwing up the DJ event. The subplot had Brian moving into Stewie's room, and he was a jerk here, making a mess, and acting like he owned the place. What's more, it was treated like they were both equally in the wrong. But Stewie only reacted to what Brian was doing. He never started anything. But as ever, Brian never has to admit that he was the one fully to blame. The best bit in the episode was the guy's failed attempt to create a podcast with their debate about how many fourth graders you could take. My guess would be a lot less than you would think actually, especially if it was in a wide open space where they could surround you. Also Cleveland's rambling was funny by itself, as was Quagmire saying it reminded him of a black guy on Family Feud. I also enjoyed the cutaway of the Italian guy, coming up with any description possible to avoid just frankly telling his mum that Louis is gay. Season 15, Episode 13 the finer strings. Carter gets cataract surgery, and Brian has to help him while he recovers. He soon becomes adjusted to the luxurious lifestyle. Also, the gang start a music group, but Peter gets kicked out. The best cutaway here was Bo Peep telling Woody that you got a friend in me? And my best moment was simply the return of Mr. Washy Washy. Sadly, this episode gets another 2 out of 5. Brian cozying up to Carter because he enjoyed the privileged lifestyle with all the money was to be expected from him, of course. But also, as expected, it ended up feeling so hollow. I don't call it hollow because they never tried to flesh out their relationship. Because Brian and Carter obviously have nothing in common, so there was no point trying to force something really. No point trying to force a connection when there was never going to be one. No, the reason it was hollow is that there was a blatant disregard to telling a story of any kind. Things kind of meander along until the ending, where Stewie throws some Flint Michigan tap water into Carter's eyes to blind him again in what seems like a big deal, right? Well, no. The episode literally pulls a fire switch wrap-up button and ends with them all making up out of nowhere. No regard for anything. So why should I bother analysing it further? The subplot was okay at least. Peter getting inspired by this 11-year-old violinist was interesting, but of course he actually sucked at playing it himself, resulting in some conflict between him and the guys. But it was nice to see Mr. Washy Washy back, even if he was teaching Peter how to play in a rather extreme way. This wasn't the funniest episode in terms of cutaways, but there were two I liked. Peter trying to say Lois takes forever getting ready, only for her to interrupt the cutaway to put the record straight. And Bo Peeps, you've got a friend in me. While in the middle of banging Buzz Lightyear, I found very funny indeed. Season 15, Episode 14, The Dating Game. Quagmire discovers Tinder and becomes completely obsessed. Also, Stewie is suffering from scolosis and is forced to wear a back brace. My favourite cutaway here was Stewie's pleasant surprise, like when a woman in a Porsche Cayenne isn't a complete bitch. My best moment was 
The guy's trying to teach Quagmire how to use Tinder. I gave this one a 4 out of 5. And it's very lucky to be getting that rating, but hey. This season hasn't had a 4 rated episode yet. And this was on the borderline between a 3 and 4. So I rounded up rather than down. This started with a 7 minute intro of Mayor West buying this run down castle themed restaurant after beating the guys in an auction. Then the guys try to infiltrate the building in various medieval ways, resulting in them burning down the whole place in the end. It was kind of weird because this didn't transition into the main story at all. It was just a standalone Act 1 story. It was funny enough though, with the guy's antics, and the dark joke of the old couple cancelling their insurance, so I will give it a pass. The best bits of the main plot was the guys trying to teach Quagmire what to send to the women of Tinder. It's always funny seeing how incompetent he is when it comes to the internet, and it's no surprise he gets hooked on Tinder when he finds out he can more effectively have sex with a bunch of women. There's nothing more quagmire than that, right? Now I've never used the app myself, but I can guarantee that it doesn't work quite as shown here. Certainly not for the vast majority of men anyway. For the ending, it was nice to see Quagmire break his addiction and get back to his old self. Stewie wearing this back brace never had much substance. But I did like the observation of how people, but especially kids, get pitied when they have something physically wrong with them. Stewie took full advantage of that too. My favourite jokes here were the guys playing football with the prostitute they hired, and especially the woman in the Porsche Cayenne hitting Stewie with the car. She was apparently trying to waft her own fart smell, not telling him to cross. Which is a lot more believable, honestly. Season 15, episode 15, Cop and a Half Wit. Peter assists Joe in taking down criminals, but Joe starts hogging all the credit. Meanwhile, Stewie gets a concussion. My best cutaway was Orson Welles was tricking people so he could get to the front of the line at McDonald's. And my best moment was the ending. I gave this one a... 4 out of 5, the second in a row. They kept most of this simple, just Peter coming along with Joe and taking care of all the criminals basically. Joe takes all the credit though, leading to a few scenes of Peter blackmailing him once he finds out. I mean it was fine. I liked how unimpressed Peter was with Joe's belongings in his house. I did find it a bit strange that Peter was the really brave one and Joe was the coward, but the ending answered all of my criticisms and is what made this episode end up working so well. It acknowledges that, yes, Joe did used to be this tough guy, but his confidence has been worn down over time. This actually connects with the audience because we have indeed seen that in front of our eyes over the years. So seeing him find himself again, rescue Peter and save the day, was very satisfying. Sure, he probably will relapse next time he appears, but for this episode at least, there was some okay character development. Everything came together about as well as it could have. The subplot of Stewie trying American football because he was insecure about someone calling him a girl was decent. Him getting a concussion was maybe a bit graphic, however I did enjoy some of Chris's randomness and at least Brian admitted he was partly to blame for pressuring Stewie so much. In terms of the cutaways, Joe as a magician's assistant not being able to wiggle his toes was funny. Honestly, I'm surprised it's taken them this long to make that joke. But my favourite was Orson Welles' War of the Worlds prank, which was apparently only so he could skip the queue at McDonald's. Although, I will say, this is not historically accurate. The War of the Worlds radio broadcast was in 1938, but the first McDonald's did not open until 1940. Just saying. Season 15, Episode 16, Saturated Fat Guy. Lois forces Peter to eat healthily, so he decides to sneak snacks. 
After he inadvertently creates a tasty sandwich, he decides to start a business selling junk food. My best cutaway here was stuck like Winnie the Pooh, and best overall moment was the annoying way in which Peter serves his customers. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. This featured exactly the type of silliness you might expect, from Peter becoming even more of a junk food addict, and getting even fatter than he already is. It did have a few nice moments though, like the bit with Cleveland, where he first made the sandwich, and how his answer to this big calculation he does is simply money. I also liked his little food truck, with the napkins getting blown by the wind, and the low hanging metal thing they all bang their head on. There isn't much else to actually analyse here honestly, the ending was rather rushed, and featured a kind of happy, kind of not happy ending moment between Peter and Lois, it didn't work the best. I was also not that into Meg's roller derby side plot, but at least she seemed good at it, and Chris was able to show that he actually cares about her for the ending. All the references to Meg's coach being a sex offender though, I found more annoying than funny. Overall, this episode is just kind of average. Season 15, Episode 17, Peter's Lost Youth. Peter wins a church raffle for a week in a fantasy baseball camp. However, he takes Lois, who steals his spotlight. Meg gets put in charge of Stewie while they are gone. My best cutaway was Peter fooling around on the airport carousel. And my best moment was the reunion between Meg and Stewie. This one gets a 2 out of 5. The main plot here was kind of mid. I am by no means a baseball fan. So that side of things did nothing for me. Any references that were there almost certainly went over my head. Ditto with the Peter and Lois bickering and jealousy. It's not at all fresh and has been done better many times in the past. I have nothing else to add on the main plot really, other than maybe the gag of Peter's muscles shutting down was okay. The side plot was nothing amazing, but it worked better than I thought it would. At first I thought it was going to be a bit over the top for Stewie to be playing Meg up so much, but Meg actually stood her ground and would not tolerate any crap. The bit where he runs away was not great, but the scene where he comes back to the family makes up for it. Him and Meg seem to genuinely feel sorry for their behaviour, and it leads to a surprisingly nice moment between them. Still, when you combine the lacklustre main plot with subpar jokes, this is not the most enjoyable episode. Season 15, Episode 18, Lee Peter Principal. When Principal Shepard suffers a breakdown during his divorce, Peter gets the temporary job as principal. Meg takes advantage of this. My best cutaway was Brian on the Night Watch. And the best overall moment was Brian and Stewie getting revenge on the prostitutes. I gave this one a 2 out of 5. Another disappointment here. For starters, the way Peter got the job as principal made no sense. The school representative guy was literally taking volunteers from the audience. Like whoever wants it gets it type of thing. No qualifications needed. Peter of course ends up abusing his position of power after being manipulated by Meg into taking revenge on her bullies for her. It's somewhat understandable for Meg and her friends to feel some resentment to those people, but as I said, in the end it did get far too much. There were also numerous long and drawn out gags here, the most egregious one being Peter slipping on the baseball bats. That went on for a solid 45 seconds, and it's not like there were many good jokes to make up for them. Brian and Chris getting the stabbing treatment in the cutaway was okay, but that's the best of them. The subplot here was mildly better, maybe. The bit of Brian and Stewie operating this brothel was not that great by itself, but after they got kicked out, it was good to see them turn the tables by calling the cops on the prostitutes. Season 15, Episode 19, Dearly Deported. After meeting her at a water park, 
Chris starts going out with a Hispanic girl named Isabella. When she gets deported to Mexico, Chris promises to look after her kids, much to the annoyance of Lois. My best cutaway was Peter sitting on the eggs, only to get lured away by the mongoose, which of course comes back for the ending. And my best moment was the ending. Not only that bit, but the whole ending sequence. I gave this one a 4 out of 5. I didn't have great expectations for this type of story, but it actually ended up being really enjoyable. The opening set piece at the water park was fun enough, with Meg going too soon after Brian down the water slide, and the rather creepy way Chris met Isabella. Now the middle part of the episode, with the two hanging out a bit, served the purpose of moving the story along. But things didn't really kick into gear, until the family go to Mexico, to take her kids back. I liked some of the jokes with Quagmire, after he tries to rescue them all, with his plane, and Chris risking his life to save the babies from the coyotes, was indeed a very brave thing for him to do. In the end, it is Consuela, who is Isabella's aunt, by the way, who comes to bring them all back to America. As I mentioned, I loved the ending here, both parts of it. The more serious part, where Chris has his nice moment, with both Lois and Isabella, after recognising that, yes, he is actually too young to be taking care of the babies. But also the bizarre mongoose ending, where they apparently kill the whole family. Obviously it's non-canon, but it was a good callback to earlier in the episode, as well as a very creepy, very eerie way to end. We're having sloppy joes. There were a few other jokes I found nice here as well, like Consuela, as the CEO of Yahoo, deciding that their business strategy is to be the secondary email people use to sign up for porn sites. I also liked how Stewie pointed out to Chris that him saying to Lois that taking care of kids is easy literally like shattered her whole world. Season 15, episode 20. A house full of Peters. Peter's past as a sperm donor catches up to him when his many children show up unannounced. At first, all goes well, until one of them takes a liking to Lois. My best cutaway was Peter as an NFL announcer pretending to care about the shows after the game. And my best moment was Lois, Bonnie and Donna prank calling their husbands. The season finale gets a 3 out of 5. It was a mediocre way to end the season, which just about scraped a 3. Some bits in the first act were decent. Despite being a bit cruel, I did still enjoy the wives pranking Joe and Cleveland. They knew exactly what to say to cut them the deepest. However, the Peter prank call didn't go so well. It ended up exposing that he once donated sperm, and actually has what seems like hundreds of children out there. Peter hanging out with his kids, of various ages, was okay, although the second half of the episode did turn into a bit of a marriage drama. One of Peter's kids has the hots for Lois, and reminded Lois of a young Peter, so she doesn't resist him, as she should. At least they tried to show that Lois wasn't cheating because she wanted to, she just kind of got sucked into it. And she did put things right in the end, by helping Peter who was getting his ass kicked in the fight. The whole thing was not amazing, but again, it was just about serviceable. Likewise, this wasn't the funniest episode, but I did very much like Peter as the bored NFL commentator. Now I don't watch much American football, but from what I have seen, they really do speak like that during the commercials. So that is season 15 in the books. And here is the summary. The overall average score was 2.85, technically down from last season, but not noticeably so. My bottom five episodes were Gronkso Bees at 5, Peter's Def Jam at 4, Peter's Lost Youth at 3, Hot Shots at 2, and as the only one out of 5, number 1 is American Gigolo. My top 5 were How the Griffin Stole Christmas, sneaking in as a free rated episode, 4th was The Dating Game, 3 was Cop and a Half Wit, 
2 was Dealey Deported, and the 5 rated episode of the season was Passenger Fatty 7. So, as the chart shows, the 3 rated episodes were the most prominent here, taking up almost half the season, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Overall, this season is very similar to the last, quality wise, and the show is continuing its steady progress its steady recovery from the very worst seasons. Now it's still a long way from good, in fact I would still call it below average, but one thing I've learned from doing this and the Simpsons reviews is that once a series has been going over a decade, you kind of expect this type of thing. As long as the season doesn't get too many unwatchable episodes, then I honestly don't find it too hard to sit through. I have become accustomed to it at this stage. It also helps that this season had at least one episode I would class as an all-time classic. I don't have anything else to say about this season really. It's just more of the same from the show at the minute. They have settled into a pattern of mediocrity. If they ever break it, I hope it's broken in the positive direction. But let me know your thoughts on this season if you have any guys. And if you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. Also as a reminder, as I mentioned at the start of the video, please pop over to the poll in the community section if you want to have a say on some upcoming content for the channel. With those requests done, I'm out of here. Take care all.